Devermere, Houston. Good morning. A little wake-up music for Mike. And good morning, Houston. It sounds great. Unfortunately, we have come to the time when we must summarize what we have done together. And again, unfortunately, come to the point where we speak of speak to our friends of farewells and until we meet again. But this is natural because uh, over our lunch a few minutes ago, we recalled our friends who work on the ground and who would also like to uh, go into space to work on the Mir complex on the space shuttle. And the time has come to say farewell to make way for others. Over the past few years, which have passed very quickly, uh, that means that we've done quite a bit of work and we are content with uh, what we have accomplished. We have uh, good, uh, good impressions, uh, a large uh, number of good results we hope are returning on the shuttle. This is our hope and this is why indeed people fly into space. We hope that the results of these experiments will help everyone on the planet. I would like to express my thanks to everyone who trained the crews, to all the specialists who helped in the training to perform all of these tasks, and a great thanks to the commander of the space shuttle and to all of the crew members because each tried to perform their tasks only in the uh, most diligent and most excellent way. Thank you to everyone who took part in this mission. And I would like to say, uh, first of all, to the Russian people that they can be extremely proud of the men on this Mir uh, space station. We could have, have asked for a better host or more professional cosmonaut. Uh, I've never, uh, frankly, met uh, two more professional people. The uh, Mir space station itself is an extremely nice laboratory uh, for doing scientific work in space. Uh, it's been a, a wonderful professional uh, uh, mission, and uh, I think we have accomplished 100% of the things that we came up here to do. And uh, it's very sad to uh, leave two uh, not only fine cosmonauts, but excellent friends uh, that we've made up here. Now I'd like to give uh, Dave Wolf a chance to uh, say something. Thanks, Terry. Uh, this has been uh, an amazing experience. It's been uh, one of the hardest of my life, and I think Andy can expect the same, but that's how the best experiences in our life must be in many cases. We've made the best of friends with uh, Pavel and Anatoly. I have to say that we are bringing together two of the finest spacefaring nations in the world. And the result that we're going to get as we join forces in the International Space Station is going to be amazing. Uh, the whole country, all of our countries will take part in this and enjoy this, and we will share in it. And the results will uh, design our future quality of life, just as NASA of the past designed our current quality of life. And so enjoy taking part. We want to share it with all of you and uh, look forward to seeing you on Earth. This is uh, a day of mixed feelings for me because on the one hand the shuttle is leaving and the friends that I've been with um, will be leaving and flying home. But on the other hand, I, I'll be staying here and starting what will be a new phase of my life, doing probably what is one of the most uh, unusual things that anybody could do in this, the last part of the 20th century. So although they're leaving, it now gives me the opportunity to start this uh, adventure that I'm on. So it's time to go on with work and that's what I'm ready to do. This is Mark Corot with the uh, Houston Chronicle newspaper for uh, Dr. Wolf. I wonder what you anticipate for yourself physically as you return to Earth. Do you look forward to a quick readaptation to gravity? Do you think it's going to be kind of drawn out? Will it be kind of what your predecessors have encountered, or are you going to try to uh, hurry it up? that we've had up here. You know, 
when you're in space, uh, you feel like a superman. You can lift a refrigerator with your baby finger. And uh, so I'm feeling pretty good, and we've been working out pretty hard. And I expect to be able to walk off that shuttle. And uh, if the scientific community will allow me, it, that can harm some of the results that we're looking for. Uh, I'm looking for a pretty quick recovery, and uh, but I'll tell you more about it after we get back to Earth. This is Michelle Coyden with the Associated Press for Andy Thomas. Your new commander for Mir said today from Baikonur that your Russian is pretty poor and he's um, afraid that it's going to have a negative impact on your work. Do you agree that it might affect your work? Uh, I would have to say that I wish my Russian was better because I would like to have the spontane spontaneity of communication that helps you establish a working relationship. Um, I think it will slow us down a bit, particularly initially, but I think after a while we'll learn a basis for communication uh, which will be acceptable. And so I'm looking forward to doing that. I can assure that Space Station Mir is a great place to learn Russian. Um, this is Michelle Coyden with the AP again. For Commander Solovyev, since the next commander of Mir did express concern about Andy Thomas's Russian skills, how would you say you rate his skills? Andy speaks very well in Russian. I expect that there will may indeed be some problems. However, in the several days that we have worked together, Andy, I have not seen any problems. I'm telling you this without uh, any reservation. You speak very well, and I think. With, uh, I agree with Dave Wolf that uh, it's an excellent uh, environment for the learning of a language. This is Seth Bornstein from the Orlando Sentinel. For Dr. Wolf, uh, you've talked about in the past how you've had some down periods and some up periods during your four months. Can you tell us uh, what, the, what precipitated the lowest periods, what they were like, and what precipitated the highest periods and what uh, they were like? Well, the low periods, uh, I think, resulted from very long work hours, uh, the lack of being able to communicate, I'd say, on an, an intimate level. We can technically communicate quite well, but uh, you get a little bit lonely for just plain talk. The high periods, of course, was the spacewalk, and going out with the most experienced spacewalker in the world for a private lesson. This was Anatoly's 16th spacewalk. And when you put the carabiner on the outside and float outside and get a good look at what's really going on here, that's got to be one of the highest points in your life. Uh, Todd Halverson of Florida Today for uh, the Mir 24 crew. Could you tell us whether you think the shuttle Mir program has helped the United States and Russia bridge cultural, technical, and language barriers? and whether you think that experience will help both sides prepare for building the International Space Station. Well, there's no question about it. it there will be a great benefit. As I look back at what we've all learned, uh, I'm talking about the people on the ground in the control centers, the people that design these missions and, and the crews, it would be hard to imagine pressing forward with the International Space Station not having had the experience of the Joint Shuttle Mir program. Uh, Bill Harwood, CBS. Just a, a change of subject question. I know the flight control team down in Houston today took just a moment to recall Flight 51L, which of course was 12 years ago today. I was just curious if you guys up there took a moment to remember that today or if you were too busy or what your thoughts might be. Actually, we took a moment to remember that uh, last night. Uh, Bonnie Dunbar, who was uh, around during that period, well, like they say, everyone remembers when that happened. Uh, she brought it up to us, and we took a moment to remember it last night. Uh, Bill Hart with CBS again, also for Anatoly Solovyev. Uh, sir, the, I guess there's a half dozen spacewalks or EVA scheduled for the Mir 25 crew coming up, and several of those are listed as Spectre uh, repair EVAs. Uh, as someone who's there and has looked at this pretty intimately and worked on it yourself, what do you think the prospects are of eventually being able to recover the use of Spectre uh, downstream? It's a very uh, urgent work. Undoubtedly, it will require uh, extensive expenditures. 
of both uh, material and, uh, and physical effort on the part of the crew because it requires EVA and uh, work inside the station. But to say briefly, it's a very urgent, uh, real work. It's a good practice for uh, the uh, possible repairs to be performed on the future space station. All of you uh, understand Mir very well. It's a uh, very fine detail. Right now we are about to build a new international space station. What uh, what impressions as you, do you, as specialists, uh, do you, what might you have uh, in terms of what you'd like to see in the new station? Uh, I will take the lead in answering. First, yes, it's true, soon the first segment of the International Space Station will be launched into orbit. As far as what we might desire, this is a very broad question, but if, to, if we answer it briefly, we might want to uh, pay attention to design and ergonomic human factors uh, aspects of the interior of the station. There's a, a great deal of effort that must be expended in this area, and uh, the crew can have a great deal of input. The, the new international uh, station will be a great achievement of the two leading space-faring uh, nations and other countries. It will be a workplace, and it will be a, uh, a major achievement. This is uh, the Phase 1 shirts, uh, and we'd like to present these to you. And uh, Phase 1, remember, was a stepping stone to the the next place, the International Space Station, and then hopefully on to uh, Mars. So, for Anatoly. Oh, thank you very much. No thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, are you with us on audio? We sure are, Dave. Very good. I'd like to explain something here uh, that's helped us a lot in space. Uh, there's a, a factory, a candy factory, that's on the uh, near the center part of Moscow. It's called the Red October Candy Factory, and they've been sending us some of the best candy in the world. It comes up in uh, the progress launches. Uh, some came up on the shuttle. And anyway, we've been enjoying that. But we found another candy factory, and uh, we've been receiving all this candy, but we want to give some back. And it's from Indiana. It seems to have floated away. <laughs> Finally, we'll give some candy back. But this is the Wolf Candy Factory in Attica, Indiana, made this. So we'll try this after dinner tonight. And one for you, Anatoly, and one for you, Pavel. And uh, candy makes a big difference up here. It's one of the joys of space. Homemade candy from the Wolf Factory in Attica, Indiana. <laughs> this whole experience is just too much to, uh, you don't have the right words. Hey Chris, that concludes our event. We copy all, Terry. Thanks for having us on board.